Hi, this is Jason Gorman from Codemanship with the second in my series on test-driven development for JavaScript programmers. Um, if you recall from the first video, um, we looked at the, the basic three steps of test-driven development. You start by writing a failing test, then you write the simplest code to pass that test, and then, if necessary, you stop and you refactor your code to make sure that going forward it's as easy to change as possible. In this second video, um, we're going to be going a little bit further in depth on test-driven development, and we're going to introduce three good habits, if you like, um, that you might want to try and get into while you do TDD that make it more effective and more sustainable. Uh, okay, I'm going to be working um, in Node.js, and um, I'm going to be writing unit tests with a tool called Mocha, M-O-C-H-A. Um, there will be a link to the Mocker page, web page, in the description below. Um, and for this particular demonstration, we're going to be focusing on three habits for test-driven development. So you don't have to do these things to do test-driven development, but I've found over the last 20 years that it, uh, they really do help. Um, the first habit we're going to look at is um, rather than writing... Um, the setup for our test and then calling the function that we want to test and then making some assertions at the end, what we're actually going to do is we're going to turn that process around and we're going to write the assertion first. And as we do that, I'll explain why I think that helps. And we're also going to be looking at um, why it's important to make sure that you see the test fail before you make it pass. And then finally, we're going to talk about how many assertions, how many reasons should a test have to fail, if you like. So I found that, that tests are more effective when they only have one reason to fail. Um, so that when a test fails, it immediately pinpoints a problem, makes it much easier to debug. So those three things, we're going to write the assertion first and work backwards to the setup in the test. We're going to be running our tests to make sure that they do actually fail when the result is wrong. And then we're going to be um, dividing up our tests. If there's more than one reason for that test to fail, we're going to divide it up into multiple tests, each one having only one reason to fail. OK, now, the problem we're going to be working on is very, very straightforward. Um, we're going to be writing a function that allows us to donate DVDs to a video library. Um, and when we donate a DVD, two things will happen. First of all, that DVD will be added to the library. And then secondly, we'll give that DVD, we'll assign it one rental copy so that people can borrow it. OK, now, let's get started. Um, I'm going to write a test for our video library. And... Let's call this test, um, it accepts donated DVD. Okay. So, whereas in the previous video, what I would have done is I would have said, well, we're going to need a video library like that. Um, I'm not going to start there. I'm actually going to start by writing the assertion. I'm going to ask the question that I want to ask first. So let's assert that our donated DVD can be found in the library. Now, there's a bit of a knack to this, but obviously there's no such thing as a library yet. So having, um, having referenced a, um, a variable that doesn't exist, what I would then do next is fix that by declaring the variable. So it's broken and then I fix it. Let's fix it. Let, so it's nice and modern. OK, um, and let's now initialize that so that it knows that it's an array. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the index of a matching DVD that has the title that we're expecting. OK. And we would expect that to be well the only um, the only DVD in the collection, the first one definitely. Um, okay, should not be 
an assignment that should be there you go okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to donate a DVD to the library so I'm referencing a function that we can use to donate DVDs and again it's complaining that there's no such um, function and there's no such variable so we're working backwards from these references that we're making in our test okay let's make some nice global functions and let's create a local variable oh, doesn't like that doesn't like that okay let's create a local variable for our dvd uh, we can probably make that a const you'll see while i'm doing this in a minute and this is going to be an object so let's give it a title that will match so what's happening here as i'm working backwards is that the the assertion essentially told me that this is what you need in terms of setup to ask this question so i'm working my way backwards from the question to the setup so that i get only the setup that i need to ask this question and what we're going to do is we're going to assign this to the library okay now there we have our test an empty library we donate a dvd to that library and then what we're saying is we should find that dvd in the library as the first element in the array um, now if i run this test okay um <laughs> forgot to import that let's import assert This is why it's very, very important to, to see tests fail. Run them and see what happens. Take no one's word for it. Okay, now I run that test, and the test is failing, um, but the test assertion is not actually failing. What's actually happening here is we're getting a type error. Now, what I want to know is if the item was not added to the library or if it was added to the wrong part, part of the collection or something. In other words, if the result was wrong, would this assertion fail? And the reason I want to know that is because this unit test going forward is going to protect me against breaking the code. If there are any regressions, if I make a change that breaks the code, um, I would like a unit test to fail to tell me that I've broken it. So I test my tests by making sure that they do indeed fail when the result is wrong. So let's do the simplest thing to make this thing. Oops. Let's do the simplest thing we can think of to make this thing fail. And in that case, it would just be an empty array. OK, there we go. So now we're actually saying that the assertion does fail. So this test is a good test. In other words, if this DVD is not added to the library, then this test will fail. So any developer working on this code in the future, if they were to break that code for any reason, um, this test would pick that up. OK. So test your tests by seeing them fail for, for the right reason. See the assertions fail. Right, OK, now passing this test is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is add our DVD to the library. Let me rerun our test. And it should be green. Our test should be passing. Lovely, OK. Easy enough. Now. The, uh, the the second part of this particular requirement is that we add um, uh, we assign a rental copy to the DVD. So let's make a second assertion here. And what we're saying here is, let's look in the library. It's the first one in the library. Is that the number of copies of this DVD title in the library? Should be equal to one and again we're saying that it's complaining here so let's create that field oops no that's not what i meant to do strange behavior let's add it to the actual object itself so it starts with zero rental copies before we've donated it and then when it's added to the library we give it one rental copy okay again before i make this pass let's see that it does indeed fail yep it was expecting one but it's actually zero as we would expect and now we do the simplest thing we can think of to make this pass so let's create a copy of our dvd 
set the number of copies to one. Okay, let's run that. And both of those assertions are passing. But as I said, I'm not entirely happy with this particular unit test. And there are a couple of reasons for that. And the first one being that when this test fails, there's two things that could be wrong. So it doesn't quite pinpoint what the problem might be. Was the title not added to the library? Or was it that uh, we didn't sign a rental copy? Now, the way that these testing frameworks work usually is that when one assertion fails, that's it. The test is over, basically, and it doesn't bother to evaluate the following assertions. So what I'd want to do is I'd like to have tests that pinpoint a problem, and each test only has one reason to fail. So I'm going to refactor my test code now. Let's first of all take out the common setup for those two assertions and put those outside in our closure there. OK. And immediately I rerun the test because that's refactoring. And now what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to rename this. So donated. Um, yeah, sorry, add donated DVD to the library. And I'm going to create a second test. Assigns one copy to D. Okay, so let's paste in our assertion there. So now when we run our tests, hopefully, we've actually got two individual tests. I can't see them. Where are they there? Past two of two tests. Let's just take a look there. So if either of those were to fail, it would pinpoint a specific problem. Um, also, you will notice that by splitting them into two tests, that's giving you an opportunity to use the names of the tests to, to essentially document two behaviors. Adds donated DVD to library and assigns one copy to uh, donated DVD. So as documentation, it works better than just having one test that asks all of those questions. So essentially each test now describes one particular rule or one particular behavior. Okay, so there's a bit more cleanup to do here. I'll just do that. Um, this really is um, uh, solution code. It doesn't belong in the test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this in its own solution code module. Let's call that video library. And let's paste that in. No, that's not what I meant to do. Um, let's cut that from here. Paste it into there. Let's export it. And now let's import it into here. And let's call it donate. Okay, so that's one refactoring. So let's immediately rerun our tests, make sure that it's working. And that's all good. Okay, so red, green refactor, write a failing test. That's your red light. Um, make the test pass simply and quickly. That's your green light. Um, and then if necessary, refactor the code to make it easier um, to change going forward, easier to understand, simpler, free of duplication, etc., etc. We'll talk more about that in a future video. Um, on top of that, we find that it works better when you write the assertion in the test first and work backwards to the setup. So then you get the setup that you need to ask the question you want to ask. Um, we tend to find that it's a good idea to make sure that you've seen the test fail. When I say see the test fail, see the test assertion fail so that you know going forward that it's going to be a good unit test. It's going to project, protect you against regressions. And finally, um, we find that it is, it is useful if each of your tests only asks one question, only has one reason to fail. So when a test fails, 
it immediately pinpoints the, the specific problem, but also it gives us an opportunity to more clearly document each rule or each behavior using the names of the tasks. So there you go, that's video number two. Keep an eye out on our channel for video number three. Um, and again, look in the description below. If you're new to Mocha, um, take a look at it. Other unit testing tools are available for JavaScript. You don't have to use Mocha, but I've been finding that it's actually pretty good as a search. Uh, there you go. See you on the next video.